Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the government training for potential government contractors. And I will be facilitating this training for the next hour. And if you have any questions, please, as Yasmin had said earlier, please put it in the chat. We'll talk about it as much as we can. We're going to stay within the time constraints because we know everyone is very busy. And then, but if you do have questions and we do not get to them, we will try to um, add it to our next class that we have. Okay, so just a little bit about us. Uh, as Yasmin had told everyone that we are here to help you and assist, to help you with the government contracting portion. So now if you're watching this video and you're not, uh, this recording later on, or if you're watching this recording and you're not in the state of Maryland, we also have over 94 uh, PTECs uh, throughout the uh, United States. So all you have to do is visit aptech.org and that way is aptechus.org and we will give you that information as well. It'll be in the slides. And that way, all you do is go on there and you find your state. And that way you still will be able to get this information from your local PTAC. And be, the way we are able to fund this program is because of our funding is through a cooperative agreement with the Department of Defense, you know, the DLA, University of Maryland and the Department of Labor. So that's why we're able to give you this good training to help your business to go to the next level. And our success stories, how we're able to have these success stories is because we have good small businesses coming in, getting the education, getting the training, learning from our experience in the government place, teaching you how to deal with the local, state, or federal agencies. And we also believe in highlighting those small businesses so that way, you know, we can encourage many of your small businesses to keep pushing ahead. And yes, it can be very challenging in the government market space. That's what we're here for. We're here to provide you with that mentorship and that training to really help you strategize and to learn the language, to learn the regulations, the rules and the roles and responsibilities as now a federal contractor being via prime contractor or a subcontractor. So now what we're all about. As you know, we are a nonprofit organization. We provide that individualized counseling for you. So we're helping you with your government marketing strategies. We're literally taking our time learning about your business so we can put together a plan for you. And as I said earlier, we deal with the federal, state, and local procurements in the state of Maryland. Then we help you with your SAMs, your certifications. You know, we provide those assistance for you. Reviewing of your bid and proposals because when you're getting to working with a local state, there's a different procurement process. There's a different way you have to respond to bid and proposals. And that's what we're here for, to assist you with that. We help you with before you get the award and after you get the award. Because many of times we, we want to get the award, but then, okay, now that we have the award, what's next? So that's why we're here to assist you with the pre and post award, you know, helping you with those services. Then the business assessment. The business assessment gives us a good assessment of where you are in your business. So that is the current state of your business. So that way we can help you to, whether it be double or triple your, uh, your contracting leverage with the government because you have to learn everything there is and then how sometimes you may have to start as a subcontractor before you can become a prime contractor. And then there's our phases. So what we do is we teach you those phases of the business and learning those different phases and where you are in that phase. 
And now that you've grown your business or before, if you feel like you're ready for a GSA schedule, well, we provide you with that assistance. So that way you don't go out there, get the schedule, and then you lose the schedule because you were not properly prepared to go with a schedule because you have to maintain that schedule. Also, we provide specialized workshops and training. Those workshops and training are essential and are critical in your small business. We have these series and these different uh, trainings to teach you how to respond correctly to an RFP, a request for proposal or a request for quote. Then we teach you the different mechanisms of how do I find out who is my customer? You know, we also provide you with introduction of federal contracting and what is simplified acquisitions. You know, the different technology programs, say you're in the IT space, you know, we have that cyber program and it's for our small business people who are looking to go into the information technology area. And that one is, we have a specialized counselor for that who specializes in that training. So it's very important that you learn the different, attend some of these trainings so you can learn a little bit about, because you don't know what you don't know. And so you need to know what questions to ask. And by attending those new uh, trainings and classes, it kind of gets your mind into the process mode of thinking, okay, yes, I need to think about that. Yes, I need to think about this because the government contracting marketplace is a different area. So we also offer the bid matching service. This service, it just allows you to access, you know, hundreds of opportunities that we match against your profile. So once you become a client with the Maryland PTAC, we, start, we will customize your keyword searches, your commodity codes, your NAICS codes, your PSC codes, and you learn about all these different types of codes in the training that we teach at the Maryland PTAC. And then those codes we use to identify opportunities, and then we email those opportunities to your email box. But when you get those opportunities into your email box, you need to know what to do with them next. Next, do we need to make a bid decision. We need to decide, are we gonna bid on this opportunity or are we gonna push it to the side and we're gonna wait for the next opportunity? And we teach you that at the Maryland PTAC because what we're trying to teach you is as a small business owner, we wear many hats and you have to be very conscious of your time. So when you get that opportunity, if you know it's not a fit for your organization, don't waste that time for it. But if you feel like it's a good fit for your organization, then you're gonna have to save it for later and then position yourself for that opportunity. Maybe you might need to get a teaming partner, or maybe you might need to do a joint venture. And see, that is why you get the business assessment. That's why you get the expertise that the Maryland PTAC offers, so that way we can help you to define those things. So when you get those opportunities before you, you know how to proceed, yes or no. Do I go after this opportunity that's going to utilize time and resources? So these are some questions that you need to ask when you're thinking about bidding on an opportunity. So this is a great service that we offer at a nominal price. The price changes from time to time. It started like 120, then it went to like 150. So it's, and that's for 12 months. So it, the price changes. So you can always just click on the link and see what the price is for the service. Now, once you become a PTEC counselor, you know, I gave you a brief overview of certain things, but you have to have your primary place of business in the state of Maryland to be a 
uh, client for the Maryland PTAC. So that's why I always tell people, if you're watching this recording from a different area and you, you really want to utilize the PTAC, then you just find one in your area. Then you have to be establishing your business for one year. Then you have to be willing to provide the data we need to assess your, build, your business. Now, once we have that data, you have to actively pursue because if you're getting this training to go after these opportunities, then you have to be willing to actively pursue those bidded opportunities that we've identified in our sessions. So then we also ask you to be willing to submit a semi-annual client awards report then also to do an annual evaluation of your services so we could continue to improve our training, improve our classes and uh, workshops and different things that we can offer to really assist businesses to grow. And you can also go to our website to register. So that way you can um, allow it time for uh, processes. All right, before I start with the next, yes, do we have any questions before I proceed? No, no, Akisha, you're doing a great job. As I said, to those of us, to those of you who joined us since the beginning, Akisha is a latest member of our team and she's a breath of fresh air. So <laughs> I'm excited to, um, to watch, as I was excited to watch this as you are. So if you do have questions, please feel free to type them in the chat box and then we will pause later on to do some Q&A. Thank you. Okay, good deal. All right, so that means I'm doing my job because I have no questions. So the road to success. Now, I always like to talk about, I spend just a little bit more time on this slide because what we do is, is like the A to Z to contracting success. We, we have to tailor everything to your business. Some business are been in business for years in the commercial sector. However, you're thinking about coming over to work in local, state, and federal agencies. So that's why we love to connect with you. We do an introductory session with your PTEC counselor so we can learn about your business, how long you've been in business, uh, what um, areas have you been doing? What is your industry? Uh, what are you selling? Are you a uh, supplier? You know, all these things we need to learn about you to be able to properly assess your business before we can evaluate. Now, what we do when we evaluate your business, we're, we're looking at your business, see if you're contract ready. And if you are not contract ready, then we're positioning you to become contract ready. And how we position you is through the contract readiness checklist. That contract readiness checklist, it goes on through to just talk about certain things are, have you have, do you have a website? Do you have a capability statement? you know, certain things that the government is going to require of you. So that contract readiness checklist lets us know, do, what, what say you don't even have a marketing plan. Well, then we're going to have to help you with that marketing plan. So that contract readiness checklist is our foundation. That's how we get started evaluating your business. Then after we've done the contract readiness, we know where you at in your business. Now we're going to strategize. Now we're going to think about, okay, now we're going to tailor your action plan. What we do is action plans on how you're going to proceed. Say you don't have any past performance with the government and you really want to start small because you, you're fearful of getting too much before, you know, taking on too much as a prime contractor. Well, that's okay. You can become a sub. Let's start off small. Let's go to a university or a college. Let's go to, uh, let's do something very small and gain some past performance. Let's get about two or three subcontracting opportunities so that way you can get your feet wet allow yourself to gain some past performance and that way positioning yourself for a federal contract because a federal contract is going to ask a little bit more of you. They're going to ask a little bit more. They're going to um, require a little bit more because now that you decided via you can do subbing as in the federal sector as well, but 
when you're transitioning over to the prime, now you're going to be the one responsible for everything. So that is why it's important that we have those strategy sessions to tailor an action plan for your business. Now that we've tailored that action plan, we're going to execute. We're going to execute that plan that we have put together. Now, if you want to be successful, it's important that you execute the plan because planning is important. We plan for road trips. We plan for everything that we're, we're plan for retirement. We plan for everything. So would you not think you will have to plan for your subcontracting? You will have to plan to be a contractor. You have to plan for everything. And, and many times our small businesses fail and they give up because they didn't follow the plan or even attempt to follow the plan. So it is important to be persistent and follow the plan and then success. Now, once we, we've got there, we're working on it. We've got everything. You've won your contract. You're feeling really good. You still have to administer and you still have to get a contract performance. So that is important too. And that is what we're here to do is to help you with that. And I don't want to belabor this uh, slide, but that's why I said I always spend the most time on this slide because it's so important that you understand the road to success in the government marketplace. Now, how you get started, just make sure your company is following the seven federal acquisition regulations. That's in the FAR. Just be, you got to have financial resources. Just be able to fund your business until your check comes in the mail. You just got to be able to fund that business. Then you have to be able to comply with the delivery schedule or the performance schedule. Then you have to have a satisfactory performance record. It's your report card. That's your report card. Then you have to have business ethics. ethics. You, anything we do, we have to have ethics. Then it will be necessary for your accounting and how you uh, get experience and all that. You have to have the experience. If you say you have, uh, you are an accountant, then you need to make sure you have those credentials to prove that you are an accountant. And then have the necessary equipment that's necessary to perform the task that you're being asked to do, and then be qualified and eligible to receive the award. And how you do that, you gotta be registered in SAMS, you gotta have all your certification, so forth and so on. And you'll learn all that when you become a client. Now, tips for selling to these agents. The key is building relationships. With anything we do, we know we have to build relationships. Even right now with me having to give this training, it's all about our relationships. You need to know who you're dealing with, the targeting, the agencies. You can't just go out there and pick just any agency. You have to make sure that they are buying what you're selling. So that way it can be a win-win situation. Now, do they need your service? We need to find out, do they even need what you offer? If they don't, let's just move it down to the pipeline and find someone who does and then build your pipeline on that, especially. So is it gonna be an ongoing basis or is it just a one-time project? These are the things we're gonna talk about. Now, why would that agency select you over their competitor or your competition? You know, because the, there are other people out there providing janitorial services or digital services or uh, translation services. What makes your business the best? Why should I go with you? You see, because do you have 20 years of experience? What is gonna make me wanna go with your organization versus the other. And these are the things we talk about. Now you've selected this agency. Now we're going to have to go in there and locate their procurement forecast. Yes, we want to eat now, but we're going to have to eat later. So how do you do that? You want to do that with the procurement forecast. You want to know what's coming up. You know, are there open bids? Are any open bids at that agency? Because if there's nothing open at that agency, then you just put that one to the side until there is something open. And then you go back and revisit it to see if there is even any opportunities to go after 
or do they have an expiring contract that's coming up and that you might be willing to or know that you're eligible for too? You know, so these are the things we're going to talk about. Now, attending these networking events, these networking events are for you. So you can get to know that agency, that contracting officer, that program manager, all those different people. But you're also going there to meet who your potential teaming partners are, who your potential subcontractors are, who your potential competitors are. Everybody is going there to meet everyone. And it's an important you know who is in your space. If you want to position yourself accordingly, then you're going to have to know who's in your space. And that is what those networking events and industry days are for. And SAM.gov has a good way of you can just go in there, subscribe, and follow those events. So that way you can get a notice when they're having the events. But you have to go in there, sign up, and have an account to subscribe. So these, these are things we talk about in our sessions. Now, I also recommend when you find an agency that you're looking at, subscribe to their newsletters. Stay current. Know what's going on in their space. Do they got something coming up? Are they building a new building? Are they building a new um, infrastructure that you might can help with? You know, can you provide analytics? Are you an IT specialist? You know, get to know your space and see what uh, you can offer. The next thing we've talked about, do you have a capability statement, your marketing materials to give to that agency? Do you have that marketing material? Do you have your capability brief? How are you going to brief this potential um, customer? So, say they say, okay, well, we want you to come in. You know, you got to brief them. So these are some things that we um, suggest for you to get to know. Next, government buyers and primes. They dislike uh, poor bad service. So please make sure when you're ready to deliver, if they say we're going to deliver on 10 March, then you need to be delivering on 10 March. Because, and if you say you're going to provide a service on 10 March, then please be providing that service on 10 March, because you are being graded upon the service that you provide. So you definitely want to build a great report card. Now, they want to do business with established businesses, you know, and then they want competitive pricing. You know, so many times we come in thinking we're going to just get this higher price. No, not the government. We are responsible. They're responsible for taxpayers' money. So, you know, they're trying to get the best value. So value and price. So we got to definitely be aware of that. If you're trying to come here to get rich, then you, you might want to think about that again. You want to, this is a slow process, a steady, slow process, and it can be very lucrative, but it's a steady, slow process. So just be aware of that. And then stand behind your promises. If you say you're going to deliver, deliver. So that is definitely important. Now, research, research, research. Now, you know, I know y'all probably heard this so much, research, research, research. We beat this one really hard, but it's so important. Research is the most important thing. I've seen so many uh, small businesses call and ask, um, can I get a copy of the procurement forecast. Now the procurement forecast is on their website. So what that tells the contracting officer is you haven't done your research. So the, the, the point I'm making is, it's important. When you're targeting these agencies, do just exhaust all your research. Exhaust everything first before you contact them. Because you, the first impressions is a lasting impression. We all know this. We're people. We're people. When we look, well, well goodness, they didn't even check that. Or goodness. So there's letting them know, do, are you going to be one of those proactive or reactive vendors, you see? So we're positioning ourselves in a good way. So that's one thing I really want to really home on is research, research, research. To get started with these target agencies, you know, we got a local, you know, in the local area. I recommend we always start in the local area and then branch your way out. So that way, say 
you have a subcontract that doesn't show up for work, guess who got to show up? You have to show up because you want to keep your past performance. So that's why I always say start off in a local area, uh, build your team, build people that you can depend on, do all that first, S establish yourself, be doing business for a little while and then start branching out because if it's out of state, that's gonna be kind of hard for you to get there to cover down if someone doesn't show up or you haven't built your team yet. So those are some things you need to think about. Now, gather the information, we talked about that, gather the information, then, look at the future, the current and future acquisitions plans. We're gonna create a marketing plan. Then we're gonna locate these uh, funding chains, prime and sub, and that's on usaspending.gov. We teach you how to utilize it because when you first go there, it's a lot. It's a lot of information. You don't know what you're looking for. You don't know how to go through the data to really to make an informed decision. And that's what we teach you. There's plenty of other training out there, but sometimes there's so much out there that you need a structured plan to really show you how to utilize these free resources that we have out there for us. And then sam.gov, where you locate some of these opportunities. We have Emma, so many other vehicles that you can use to locate these opportunities. But like I said, once you locate these opportunities, what do you do next? You have to make a decision. What decision are you going to make? Now, now that we decided, okay, which agency is buying our products and service, we've developed this intelligence, you know, all our intelligence list. So, we went in there, we went to usspending.gov, we looked up the awards, we looked at pre-pass, we seen who's the prime on there, we seen if they have any subcontracting opportunities out there that we may can work with them on. We looked at some of these expiring contracts, we said, oh, we might can bid for that, so we've positioned ourselves for that. Then we went on SAM, we did the same thing, we looked up some opportunities, We've seen contracts been awarded. We've visited our federal small business specialists, our Ostaboos. We've looked at Emma, the eMaryland marketplace. So many times we have these portals and different uh, databases that we have not even registered for or visited, haven't set up our notifications. We provide training on the eMaryland marketplace as well. We had a, a very good presenter come over to do some training to really show you how to maximize when you go into these vendor databases to set up those keyword searches so that way you get those notifications that come straight to your email box. And then you decide, like we said, bid or no bid. Should I go on this opportunity or not? So that way you can maximize your time. So they provide so many um, resources out there for you to be able to do that. Now, how do we reach them? We teach you how to reach them. When you're trying to reach these agencies, so many times, and then especially with this COVID, so much has changed. We have in these hybrid uh, spaces, we have people in the office, out of the office, it's, it's a different um, time. So we're learning a different way of how do we reach them. And then we have to be patient. We have to be patient. We want, the, it, it is, uh, 70, 80 people reaching out to one contracting officer. And then sometimes the contracting officer can be overwhelmed and um, trying to get back with everyone. So just be patient and persistent and it will pay off. So that's why. And then one of those opportunities you can reach out is when you attend those industry days or those pre-bids. So say you found this opportunity that was a ideal fit for you, you attended that pre-bid conference. And that way you was able to act, you know, ask some questions, hear what's going on, you know, kind of like get into the know. You're learning more about this opportunity. So that way you know how to position yourself in the future. You may not be able to bid on it right now. It doesn't matter. It was the opportunity to build those relationships. It was the opportunity to build, uh, to network and to see who's all in the space, to see if I can do this as a sub. 
Is somebody need me? I've got my certifications now. I'm a woman-owned small business, or I'm a minority small business, or I'm a veteran-owned small business. Maybe I can position and be a teaming partner for one of these organizations at this free big conference. So those are many ways of reaching out, but it's going to, like I said, I want you to understand it's going to take time, but it's worth it. It's, it's going to take time, but it's worth it. And then as we talked about who is your composition, you're going to learn who your competition is. You're going to see the same faces sometime at those meetings. And it's important to build good relationships because you can mess your name up in the government marketplace and you don't want that. And then we talk about how to register and attain future bids and then the best value consideration. Hi, Keisha. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think this would be a good time to pause and take some questions. So if okay. everybody would like to type their questions out in the chat box, uh, we do have one, which is something that you just touched on. Mm -hmm. It's identifying uh, contacts, program managers, people to get more information about opportunities. They're saying that it's easier to find them at the state, county and local level, but it's more challenging at the federal level. Do you have any tips on how people can find contacts there? Yes. So now the federal level, and that's why I really want to focus on the research aspect. So, you know, on uh, let me go back just once. I think it was two slides. Um, no, it was right here. USAspending.gov, right here. That one is key because if you go in USAspending.gov, it tells you who the agency is, but, but it also tells you who the contracting officer was on that procurement. So that way you can at least get a start to who that contracting officer was. So say you had a contract that was in there for janitorial services and you wanted to know who the contracting officer was. You put that contract number in there and then it comes up. And then in there, you're gonna see a list of, it's a lot of information in there. It tells you who the person who won the contract, number one was the prime. Then it tells you, uh, the agency, and then it also tells you the contracting officer's email. They're all the information is in there. So that's why I said, if you want to start to really develop in how to get a hold of these people, you have to do the research. The research is how you get a hold of them and USAspending.gov. And then SAM.gov is a second place. Well, when you go in SAM.gov, you're going to look under the award, the contracts that has already been awarded. And then you know how when you scroll down in that SAM.gov, it will tell you who the contracting officer was on that procurement as well. So those are two ways of getting information. And then once you contact them, then you can probably, so say it was in a different division, well, you could ask them, hey, do you know who the PLC was for this, this other agency? Because that's one of your sister organizations, but you got to at least get somebody you can reach out to, to get over to the next, you know, to that next person. Okay, thank you. That seems to be all the questions we have for now. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to go back to where we were left off. So why contracts tend to repeat because the customer needs is ongoing. The, the need, it depends on who are we supporting. Are, you know, some agencies, you know, like the Department of Defense, you know, we support in soldiers down the range sometimes so, or who we are supporting for different agencies. So sometimes there's a reoccurring need, but then other times there is not a reoccurring need. Sometimes it's just a one-off on a project base. So it's definitely important to get to learn uh, that organization. And using the USA spending.gov, you can look back at past awards to see how many times have that agency purchased that service. So we're going to keep it simple. We're going to use janitorial services. So say you want to know how many times have they purchased janitorial service with uh, GSA or DISA, then you will go look up 
DISA or GSA and USA spending.gov and click FY. Now don't try to do all the FYs at one time. It's going to lock up on you. So that's why I always recommend do one at a time. So if you want to do FY22, do FY22. And then if it's not a lot of results, then click just click the add button to add the next FY21. And then if some more populate, because sometimes it'll pull so much data, it'll freeze up. You won't be able to download the information. You won't let alone preview the information. It'll just lock up. So it's definitely important when you're doing that. Then track it. So many times we look up these contract awards, but we're not tracking it. So you're going to need a tracking mechanism. And I recommend, you know, when you're first getting started, you can't, most small businesses don't have that software. So then use an Excel spreadsheet. Using an Excel spreadsheet for the solicitation, the, the period of performance, you keep up with that. You keep up when it's about to expire. You put your conditional formatting in, let you know, uh, like year out, you need to start positioning yourself because that year goes fast. Too many times we'll be like, oh, I'm going to position myself for 90 days. Out. No, you've already missed the mark. You should have positioned yourself for that a year out. You, that way you would have time to do the proposal. You have time to start preparing, getting all the documents because Many times we don't know all that goes into a proposal, qualifications, resumes. Um, then they're going to want to know how it ties together. In the resumes, you got to tie the resume to that, that task. And then in the qualifications part, you got to tie that in the resumes. And then you got to do your past performance, got to tie the past performance to that project. There's so many things involved. Your executive summary has to uh, give a synopsis of how you can meet the government's need. So, so many things going to have to happen before you can win that contract. So I always recommend start preparing yourself before the event and start getting your team together. If you have a team, if you're a one man shop, then get you some subs or get you some partners to just really assist you because it can be very challenging if you're a one person shop. And then, like I said, make a list of all those awards and keep up with it. You have to track. If you don't track it, you don't, it just doesn't happen. That's just the way it is because life happens and other things happen. It will uh, take your uh, mind away from your business development. This is called business development. And then customer selling. Remember, sales are made when the customer is convinced you will solve their problem. That's the only way you're going to make a sale. If they are convinced that you can solve their problem. And how do we do that? By reading your bid response, that proposal response. And it's important to put that thing together right. And if you do not put it together right, you will not win that contract. And all that time you spent on that and all those resources have been wasted. And we don't want to, but it's not wasted. It's an, I'm going to look at it like this. It's an opportunity to learn. I won't do that again. I'm going to position myself in a better way. Now, it also demonstrates an understanding. Do you have an understanding of the problems that was presented? So the agency says, I need seven widgets. Now, how are you going to get them? The seven widgets. What time, how many, are you gonna do a delivery schedule? Are you gonna do this? Well, then say they wanna be able to get a seven this time, but then they want 24, then they want 14. Then, so that means th there's it, it, it comes more complex. So that's why I always say, these are the things that they're gonna ask you to solve and they want an approach. So when you come to reply or respond to these sources, um, you're gonna deal with, uh, and the next one is going to be requests for proposals. You're going to be dealing with re requests for quotes. Then you're going to be dealing with sources sought. You'll learn about those. You're going to be dealing with requests for information and so forth and so on. And we'll break that down more in the individualized, specialized training. Right now, this is an overview, just giving you a synopsis of what you can expect when you're going to work with the government marketplace. 
not to be all inclusive in this training, but the other trainings are to really focus and hone in on all the different subjects. Remember, you have to put the customer first. So make sure you're listening to the needs and then developing the solutions to resolve those needs. And do not, please do not cut and paste the boilerplate language that you use for GSA to go to DISA. Those are two different organizations with the two different missions. So make sure you tailor each one for each agency. and what not to do. Do not rely on outsiders to do the direct selling for you. This is your business. This is your baby. This is what you've put together. You need to be responsible. You are the supervisor. You are the manager. You have to manage it. If you do not manage it, people, yes, they will do what they do. They will not manage it for you. Do not rely on, solely on market. It is not effective. You have to follow up. You have to build the relationships. You have to get in front of the people. You have to make the phone calls. Do not rely on certifications. Yes, I'm a woman-owned business. What's, yes, I got an AA. Yes, I got. Yes, we all got those certifications. What's going to make you different? That's what's going to make a difference. Do not rely on having a schedule. Yes, we got. A, what was it? Last I just looked, there was one schedule had like a thousand people on that one schedule. So what's going to differentiate? What's, go ahead, Jasmine. Sorry, no, I didn't say anything. Okay, I thought I heard some noise. Okay, so then we have the GSA schedule. Now don't assume, now then the next thing we have, don't assume that the member of Congress is gonna open the doors and resolve, you know, we get these new programs out there. Oh, we're gonna give you all this money for these programs. Yes, then, then you have to get in that program to get some of that information, that stuff too. So do not rely on it. Focus on your customer. Focus on what they need. Focus on your solution and how your organization, your company is gonna provide that and exceed their expectations. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, what to do? Do your homework. Be persistent, consistent, and patient. <coughs> Excuse me. Develop a contract pipeline and effectively market your product services, products and services on a regular basis. Stay in front of your customer. Stay in front of your potential customer, should I say. Attending those industry days and those networking events is very important. Don't just primarily utilize email because I know we like to do that, send out an email. I mean, we are, we are notorious for just sending out an email. Do not rely on it. As many times they'll just get that email and delete it. You do not want that. You want to take the time and build the relationship. Try to get in front of them. It's going to take, I'm telling you, sometimes it takes seven to 10 to 20 touches just getting in front of them, trying to figure out a way. Okay, they're busy right now. Let me try to contact them a little bit later. Do not try to force the relationship. Just take your time, revisit. Take your time, revisit. Take your time, revisit. That's just how it is when you build them relationships. If, if that agency is worth you getting them in your pipeline, then it's worth you taking the time to build that relationship. Learn as much as you can about that customer. Generate, you're going to have to think of reasons to reach out to them to learn more about them. That's why I gave you those different um, examples. You're going to have to get on their little email list. You're going to have to get on their new newsletters, find out when they have some outreach events. I mean, anything, just so get on their social media so you can see what's going on with them so you can position yourself accordingly. And remember, government employees and prime contractors are people just like you. You want them to respect your time, you have to respect their time as well. And finally, questions. Thank you, Akisha. That was very informative. We do have a couple of questions and I'd also like to encourage everybody to type out your questions now what we are in the Q&A section of the presentation. Okay, first question is, um, 
for a capability statement, do I need to update it in SBA? Will it automatic? If I update it in SBA, will it automatically update in SAM? And as an EWOSB, do I also need to update it in SBA in order for it to update in SAM? So it's really about the connection between those two websites. They will have to update them in both because they do not speak like that. I'm going to tell you right now, because in SAMS, there's no way for the capability statement to be uploaded. Remember, all we're doing is put the NAICS and PSC codes in SAMS. Now, SBA, that's a totally different um, system. So you will have to go in there and update that one, but they do not speak. So you, you have to go in individually and update. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is GSA versus 8A. Can you talk about the pros and cons and how businesses can decide on which to pursue? Okay, now you say GSA, the GSA schedule, and then the AA program, correct? Correct. Okay, good deal. So now the AA program, you have to, so the way you position for each now, the GSA schedule is a little bit easier to get in. All you have to have been in is what been in the business for almost two, well, I think it's two years. And then you have to market the business and then make $25,000 a year with the schedule or it will be canceled. So that's within the first two years. And you have to do that consecutively after that. Now, the AA program is a completely different program. You, I mean, it's... It is very tedious. It's a lot of uh, three years of tax filings uh, that they want to see all schedules. Uh, they, they will dig very deep in um, your back, you know, all your information in that business. They want to know if you got a diverse portfolio. So they're going to want to know how many subs, how many prime contracting opportunities, all that. You have to prove all that with the AA program. So that one is a long, because the AA program is a one hour training by itself. And then the GSA schedule is another hour, about an hour training. So a brief overview is just um, a GSA schedule is easier to get than an AA program. And then you will definitely need the pathway to access. And that's with the GSA. And that, I believe that's an hour to two hour training. And then you will have to fill out a readiness checklist. So like I said, it, it, uh, that's just a brief overview. But if you want to learn more about it, you would definitely have to uh, attend one of our trainings that's specialized to really break it down to get the pros and cons. OK, thanks. Uh, next question is, how do I find a mentor that is within my NACE code? Okay, so an, an easy way to find a mentor within your next code is to use SBA DSBS uh, search, and then you will put your next code in there to find out all, and then your area. So like we're in the state of Maryland, if you want them in the area, you will look them up in this area. Now, if you don't mind where they at, and then you will have to do the research to see how they're, because that mentor, it's a mentorship program out there, but you have to apply for that and you can only use it twice. And then you have to find a business to do that. And that's another training, a specialized training that we will have to give to really show you the benefits and how to do that if you're trying to get it that way. But if you want to get a mentor right now and a small business that's in your next code that might be willing to train you, that's an easy way to do it with the SBA DSBS profile search. Okay, great. And I've also put some links in the chat box as you were speaking. So okay, hopefully you. that's helpful to, to people because I know it's a lot of information to come out. Um, okay, there's one here about, oh, about the DUNS number. Um, I applied for Dunn's number some years ago, uh, but I have not applied for a government contract. I just received an email to say that Dunn's will no longer be used as of April this year. If I don't complete the process to have the number converted, will I have to start over and apply again? Well, if you don't complete it to have it converted, you will definitely have to start over again because we are going with the new unique 
uh, entity identification number with SAM. So if you don't get it done now, then you're going to be pretty much having to start everything all over. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, there's a question here. How do I get in contact with my PTAC counsellor via email? You should have your counsellor's email address. If not, uh, you can find it on our website. I will put the link in the chat box. And uh, as I said earlier, in order to qualify for counselling with us, your business must be in Maryland and must be at least a year old. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, if you already have a counsellor, they're just waiting to hear from you. You just need to shoot them an email. Uh, there's a question here. How do we get a list of sites to look for solicitations? Well, there, there is no per se list of sites to look for solicitations. There are different places we can uh, kind of like point you to go. So just like Sam.gov, right? That's a place where you can go to look for solicitations. Emma, that's a place where you can go to look for solicitation. It's like we are having to go to these different locations, build our own spreadsheet because they're not putting them all in the same place. So it's not a collective place where you can go. Now, however, there are some spaces like the Maryland procurement space sometimes put a couple of their county spaces on the Maryland site, um, they'll put their pipeline on that. But other than that, there's no one space to look for all those because uh, there are different organizations and different agencies who have different websites, who have different everything, different local county state regulations and laws. So we have to pretty much just go out there and get the information and build our own. Just, I would just like to add on to that, that um, we have a very comprehensive resources page on the PTAC mm -hmm. website, and that has a lot of links that will yes. assist you in a lot of these questions. So whenever you have some downtime, just go to that link that I've just posted where it says PTAC slash resources and have a look through there. Um, we have links, we have definitions, we have useful lists, and we're always updating it. Okay, the um, next question is, you mentioned business development. If a contract is coming up for a bid in 12 months, um, let's see, can a speaker, can you give an example of our marketing ac activities during the 12 months? I think that means how can you really prepare for an upcoming bid? What tips do you have there, Akisha? Okay, so... How I would do that, is it a recompete? Number one, some, has that contract been out there before? I would try to go find the old contract because that will prepare you for the pricing. So that way you'll know what the pricing was for the contracts previously. So that'll kind of give you a space to know where to start. So that's number one. Number two is proposal. You want to have to respond to this. Are you going to respond as a prime or a sub, you know what I'm saying? So if you're a sub, that means you're gonna be looking to work with someone else and they're gonna be responding to this. However, if you're trying to respond as a prime contractor for this opportunity, you, if you had the previous contract, you can start dissecting it. You can start put, pulling the resumes together because you already know you're going to have to have the resumes. You're going to start pulling the past performance together because you already know you're going to have to uh, explain to them how you're going to, your approach. Because see, these are the things. And then in that previous contract, it showed you the scope of work. That means the performance work statement, what was done. And that way you can already start speaking to that. You're preparing yourself for that. Say you got to go hire some people. Say you got to go, you know, start getting people in those positions. That is the time for you to start doing all that, preparing for that. And, and if you're going to find out when, so like you said, 12 months out, you're going to start, no, okay, when is the pre-conference? When is, the, you know, these are the things, but see, like I said, that's when you're going to have to start doing the business development and all that and have a checklist. What have you done and what haven't you done? So we will have to go through and see, okay, what have you done? What haven't you done? Have you already found out their mission? Have you spoke to their mission? Do you know their vision? Do you know, you know, these are the things that go in, that is involved in building the 
the opportunity, if you will, uh, pictures so that way you know how to speak and respond to the, um, but it was, it will be a little bit more in depth, but you know, with our time limit, that's a brief overview. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much, Akisha. That looks like all the questions so far. Um, so I'd just like to thank you um, for a wonderful presentation. If you think Akisha did a great job, just put a, put a yes in the chat. Let's hear back from, let's give us some encouragement because she, she was a little nervous and I think she did an excellent, oh wow, can you see that? Can no, let me see. <laughs> Open up your chat and have a look there. Akisha. Oh my goodness, I guess I did, huh? An excellent job. Amazing. Well, I am glad. <laughs> <laughs> so there was nothing to worry about at all. And of course, we always have the best audiences of PTAC. So yes, thank you we do. Well, thank you, everyone. And for asking great questions. There's, there's no such thing as a dumb question. We know how difficult this world is to step into. And, and you're already ahead of the curve by attending classes like this. Yeah. So thank you again, everybody. And I am going to send out the slides and I'm going to send out a link to the replay. So you'll be able to watch it again if you want to or share it with your team and of course we always encourage you to speak to your counsellor and to sign up for future classes so thanks again everybody uh take care of yourself and we'll see you again soon bye bye yes. bye everyone thank you